to extend to you on behalf of the Single Mark Club a very warm welcome to our sixth annual celebration of the life and works of Robbie Burns, that infamous and famous Scots poet. Some have meat, but can I eat? Some would eat that want it. But we have meat, and we can eat. And say the Lord, we thank it. Yeah. Yeah. His knife, see rustic, labor, dicht, and cut ye up with ready slacks. Trench in your gushing entrails bricked. <laughs> like on a ditch. <laughs> and then, oh, what a glorious sight. <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> it's reeking. <laughs> ah, and it's rich. Ah. Ye powers that made mankind your care and dish them out their bill of fare. Old Scotland wants na skinking wear the jobs in luggies. That means bolognese sauce. <laughs> <laughs> but if ye wish her grateful prayer, gee her a haggis. Toast to the haggis. While researching the topic of Robbie's life and the great tra traditions of these annual celebrations, I did note some descriptions of a typical Burns summer event. Uh, they range from stuffy, formal gatherings of intellectuals and scholars oh, okay. <laughs> to, uh, to uproariously informal rave-ups of drunks and louts. <laughs> so, uh, we're anxious to see how this night progresses. While we honor Rob Burns as a poet and spokesman for the Scottish Common Man, he is most fondly remembered as a lover. <laughs> Illicit relationships and fathering the legitimate children ran parallel to a productive period in his working life. <laughs> it was said at a recent Burns Night Supper that Robbie was as randy as a rabbit on Viagra. <laughs> Burns spread his affections freely and in the next decade saw eight illegitimate children born to him through five different women. A man of humble beginnings has established a legacy that will be cherished by his followers for the ages. We will gratefully be guided and inspired by his timely, timeless advice and spirit. Please raise your glass and join me in a toast to the immortal memory of Robert Burns. Yeah. 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 These days, the post of the Lassies has become a lighthearted vehicle to demonstrate the laddies' respect for the Lassies, while also poking a little fun along the way. In fact, there are a few laddies are at all like this laddie. I'm occasionally guilty of not fully understanding what my Lassie is trying to say to me. <laughs> Try as I might, I just sometimes don't get her message. I'm looking at well, over the years, I've compiled a translation guide, eyes. which assists me to know what my Lassie is actually saying to me. It, you know, it kind of keeps me out of trouble. Now I'm going to share my list with you, and I call it Deciphering Lassie Speak. <laughs> so when a Lassie says yes, well, that can often mean no. Well, the lassies are all saying yes, that's exactly right. In fact, when the lassie says no, that can also mean yes. Now, I have learned when the lassie says maybe, that generally means 
No, no. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make sense, right? You get the idea. Um, things aren't always what they seem, so let's keep going with Lassie speak. When the Lassie says, I'm sorry, that always means you'll be sorry. Oh. <laughs> when your Lassie exclaims, do what you want. Oh. That statement should be interpreted to mean you'll pay for this later. <laughs> when she says, I'm not upset, that of course means, damn right I'm upset, you moron. Of course, communication goes the other direction. Yeah. And so I also have a guide to deciphering laddie speak. Much simpler here. When a laddie says, I'm hungry, he simply means, I'm hungry. <laughs> when a laddie says I'm tired, he all simply means I'm tired. When a laddie says, do you want to go to a movie? What he really means is, I'd eventually like to have sex with you. <laughs> when a laddie, sa laddie says, can I take you out to dinner? That obviously means, I'd eventually like to have sex with you. <laughs> What's the difference between laddies and lassies? A lassie wants one laddie to satisfy her every need, while a laddie wants every lassie to satisfy his one need. <laughs> you know, if I had a dollar for every lassie who thought I was unattractive, the lassies would eventually find me attractive. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Took me a while to figure out. <laughs> Least we lose touch with the poetic aspect of Robert Burns, I've selected two poems to share with you tonight. The first poem I selected, actually Chris mentioned it, was called To a Mouse. And it's regarded as one of Burns' best. And here's how the mouse to a mouse starts. We slick it, cowern, timorous beastie. Oh, what a panic's in thy greasy. Thou need not stay away so hasty with bickering brattle. I would laugh with the chase thee with bootering prattle. Huh? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> well, I don't want to read that. But you don't want to hear that. So I went back to this drawing board and kept looking. I wanted to find a poem that might have some meaning for us here in the 21st century. And luckily I found one. It's absolutely lovely. It's called A Red Red Rose. So let me read A Red Red Rose. Oh, my love's like a red red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my love's like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair as thou, my body lass, so deep in love am I. And I will love thee still, my dear, till the seas gang dry. Till the seas gang dry, my dear, and the rocks melt with the sun. I will love thee still, my dear, while the sands of life shall run. And fare thee wheel, my only love, and fare thee wheel a while, and I will come again, my love, though it were 10,000 miles. Oh, that's... Oh. Isn't that something? You know, it's funny, I read that poem, and for the first time I really got Robert Burns. I just thought that was delightful, and so I kind of got inspired a little bit. I thought, you know what, I think I should write a little verse myself. <laughs> and so I worked at it pretty hard, and I've got it right here. <laughs> it's here somewhere. Wait, wait, there once was a man from Nantucket. That's not it. That's not it. I gotta hear someone. Here it is. Here it is. There once was a lassie in the valley. This lovely lass's name was Sally. She loved some wee whiskey. After which she'd get frisky when her laddie and she'd start to dally. Oh, oh yeah, oh. nicely done. Yeah. There you go. It's not quite up to bird. I sincerely hope you're a laddie as lucky as me to have such a wonderful lassie with whom to share life. And now finally, a toast to the lassie. Hey. I simply asked the women of the cliffs to talk about the Scotch Club. So my survey found that women whose husbands are already in the Scotch Club have, a very, have very simple recommendations. They want the meetings to be more frequent, <laughs> <laughs> last to 
loner <laughs> and never be held at their house. <laughs> My survey also found that women whose husbands are not in the Scotch Club also have their recommendations. Maybe their husbands don't even drink scotch. Nevertheless, they have their own set of recommendations. They want their husbands to be in the scotch group. In fact, the recommendation was made that membership in your club be mandatory for every member, male, male member of the Cliffs Valley. The Cliffs and naturally, they also agree that the meeting should be held more frequently, last longer, and never be in their houses either. <laughs> there was even a recommendation that you guys go away together for a long <laughs> weekend. <laughs> and, and even travel internationally. <laughs> Seriously, you don't have to worry about us. We're going to be just <laughs> there's just there's just one little thing that we need you to do, especially I need my Joseph to do. We would like you to turn off the, that little American Express reminder that the little ping you get every time the card is swiped. You need to turn that off because it could disturb you when you're out. Now the last recommendation for your for the group for the Scotch group was unanimous. Everyone. And it's really quite serious. It's very serious. And it concerns information collection and data gathering. And here's what we want you to know. We want to try to understand this. How is it that each month you tidy yourselves up, you grab a bottle of scotch, you scoot off to the happy occasion of your scotch club meeting, and you spend about two hours talking to other people who are all drinking. And yet, you return home with zero information. <laughs> we say, we say, honey, did you have fun? You say, yes, yes. We say, what interesting things did you talk about? And you say, nothing. <laughs> we say, did you hear anything about? And here we're interested in what is the latest rumor, gossip, news, or whatever the current issue is that has to do with their neighborhood. Your answer, which is delivered with an astonishing lack of curiosity, <laughs> is, Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. How is this possible? Put an equivalent number of women in a room <laughs> with drinking or without drinking, and we could publish a newspaper. <laughs> so, on behalf of all the ladies in the Cliffs communities, we really need you to work on this. This is a extremely serious deficit. So take it seriously. So lassies, please join me in a toast to the laddies. Here, here. Uh, Graham, I want to thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity of following those three with a very prosaic Burns poem. Why couldn't you have put me where I could have been lost and forgotten instead of following these people? <laughs> It's not bad enough I'm only wearing a, my wife's clan tie. <laughs> I should be wearing formal Scott, uh, formal Scott uh, attire. But if my wife won't wear a skirt, I won't either. <laughs> <laughs> now, when, when we lived in Scotland, we learned that what we're calling Scotch here, they called local produce. <laughs> <laughs> so the scene of the song is Lagan in Nifsdale, a small estate which Nicole bought by the advice of the poet, Robbie Burns. It was composed in memory of the house heating. We had such a joyous meeting, says Burns, that Masterton, Masterton and I agreed, each in our own way, to celebrate the business. Wrapping in our 
The cock may call, the day may dawn, and I will taste the barley green. Yeah. 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 Yeah.